Hi, this is lecture nine, part C, and here we are going to deal with the last three parts of uh, the OR, NOR, and exclusive OR logic gates. And so let's look at OR. So the OR symbol looks like kind of this uh, Star Trek Enterprise uh, on its side symbol here with the little pointy ends, not the bullet like the, the AND. And uh, what do we have? Two inputs. And instead of multiplication for the output, we actually have addition here. Right. And what does the truth table look like? So 00011011. And if we have the output, it's actually uh, true when either one of these are true. So notice the last three rows here are true. So if none are true, we get an output of zero. Right. And uh, does this and makes or this plus make sense? I, I got to be careful, not and, right? And is multiplication here. Does this plus make sense? Zero plus one is one, one plus zero is one, and one plus one, yeah, technically is two. But if we just regard any Anything above uh, zero is one. Yeah, this this makes sense. So this uh, logical addition makes sense for an or. Okay. So let's see how would we implement this in a, in Arduino like environment. Well, you've seen it before. It's the two vertical bars here, the double vertical bars, and this is for a Boolean situation. And uh, we can do it with uh, an example. So what if we had this example here, right? Does, uh, does this uh, execute the curly brackets? Well, notice we have an or here and we have uh, the two questions on the left and right. So uh, is three greater than or equal to six? Hmm, so I think no, three is not greater than or equal to six. So we have a zero on the left side, right? Okay, what about this? Well, first we had to operate on this kind of like a PEMDAS structure, right? So does three equal three? Yes, so that's a one, but then not one is zero, right? So no, both of these were zero, zero and zero. So this or actually would return zero because we're hitting the first column here, okay? Good. Now, what if you had a variable with multiple binary values? So bitwise, right? So we have a single uh, vertical bar. And by the way, DDRD is Arduino pin mode for pin zero to through seven. So this is like setting them as inputs and outputs and all that good stuff, right? And so let's say we had a variable uh, or a register of 01100011. And now we want to or it with this arbitrary set. Well, what's going to happen is I just bitwise. So one or zero, that's still one. One or zero, that's still one. Zero, zero is zero. Zero, zero is zero. Okay. Now, what happens if you or something with a, a one? Well, you make it high. And so what do we have we done? Anytime you or it with zeros, you leave it unchanged. And every anytime you or something with ones, you actually make it high. Now remember the and. If you and bitwise and something, anytime you and something with a zero, what do you get? You get a zero. Any, uh, you get a zero, so you actually bring it low. But if you and something with one, you leave it unchanged. Okay, so we kind of have those two patterns here, right? Okay. Let's look at the nor. Well, the nor, if you know the or, the nor is pretty easy. You just add a little bubble, right? Or you put a, a bar over the top, okay? So what do we have here? We have A or B and then not. So this is a nor and the truth table is basically just the inverse of the or, right? So a one zero 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 instead of a zero one one one, okay? All right, good. And then the bitwise, how do you do the bitwise? Take the or, right, either a double vertical bar or a single vertical bar and just add a not to the outside. Here you're adding a bitwise not, a tilde, and here you're adding the exclamation not. Okay, good. The last one we wanna do is the exclusive or. So what is the exclusive or? Well, we have this special exclusive or operator here. It's a special plus. And what does the symbol look like? It looks like that Star Trek symbol with an extra you know, fin on the back, all right? And uh, the truth table is basically exclusively only one is true uh, at a time, right? So if you have both true, it's zero. But if the one uh, A is true or B is true, then, then we're good, okay? So exclusively, right? Um, what, how could we make this or how do, how do we implement this in Arduino? Well, it's, we don't really have an exclusive or Boolean case, right? But what you could do is this, you can combine the question, does it not equal to, right? So does A not equal to B? 
right? That's kind of what you can do. But what you have to assume in this case, if you're going to use this simple, simple implementation, you have to assume that A and B are one or zero. You can't assume that this is like three or seven or eight. And we'll do an example of what I mean later. But let's just look at this one first. OK, um, now this is the more robust way. Uh, and what you want to do is basically add an inversion to both input sig signals. And this guarantees that your input signals are one or zero. But let's let's talk about this later. Let's just go into this one first. OK, so if I have two variables, we'll call them switch one and two. And then I want to see, is this true? According to this, according to this truth table, it should be, right? Because I have one, I only have one of them true, right? So it should ping, we'll say that one. But let's ask the question, is this doing a good job, right? So does one not equal to zero? Yes, it does, right? And so we would, in this case, if you had to turn on an LED, yes, it will, okay? One does not equal to zero, yes, okay. Now, let's say we had a situation where uh, these two values were three and five. They're not one, but we would like to regard them as a high, right? So yeah, okay, we're getting three, five, but we wanna say, yeah, three is actually five, or sorry, three is actually one and five is actually one. So we, we wanna regard these both as true. So this would actually not work. Our simple version here is not gonna work. And you'll see why here, because three definitely doesn't equal five. And so this is going to, um, uh, return, let's see, let me, let me, let me, sorry, let me back up here. So what do we have? Does three not equal to five? And so we have um, yes, right? And that would be a problem because if we have both of these high, we actually should expect that we cancel out. We should not want to go in there, right? And so what we see is an intent contradiction, right? Because for the exclusive or the high inputs should return zero, right? As we see here on the truth table, right? Okay. Now, what can we do? We can go back here and utilize this more robust version. And let's see how, how that works. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these same numbers, three and five, but I'm going to put these little inversions before we ask the question. Okay. So if I invert three, what do I I get, I actually get zero. And if I invert um, five, what am I going to get? I'm also going to get zero. And so the question is, does zero not equal to zero? No. And then we get our robust behavior. This behaves like an exclusive or. So this version always works. This version is good only if, uh, if A and B are uh, one or zero. Okay. All right. So let's look at the uh, way to implement this with an ex uh, a bitwise situation. So we had the Boolean situation, which I think the more robust way is, uh, is this one. But what about bitwise? Now the bitwise, they actually do have a symbol that you can use. It's the caret symbol, right? And uh, uh, let's do an example here. So again, we have some port or some register. Uh, we have a, a set of eight binary bits. And uh, let's say we do an exclusive war with this set. Okay, so what's happening? Well, if I do an exclusive war with one and zero, what do I get? I get one, I get zero, I get one. Okay, and here, what do I get? I get one, right? And I get ooh, one and one becomes zero and then zero, zero, one. Okay, so no problem here. Okay, one zero one one zero 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 one. Okay, but now let's look at really high level what happened. If I take an exclusive or with zeros, what did I do? I didn't change anything. Notice these two sets didn't change. But if I exclusive or something with one, what have I done? I flipped the bits. So the zero became a one and a one became a zero. Right. So that's kind of a, a nice way to think. Right. So what does an and do? An and gives us the ability to cancel out bits or leave it unchanged. And or what does it do? It gives the ability to increase or raise the bits or leave it unchanged. And exclusive or what does it do? It gives us an opportunity to invert the bits or leave it unchanged. Interesting. OK, as a little aside, what happens if you have multiple exclusive or inputs? You got to be careful here. It just depends on your intent. And so sometimes you might desire or think that multiple exclusive ors is going to give you an output where it only will return true if only singularly one input is true. And that's just not the case if you cascade a bunch of exclusive ors. Multiple exclusive ors will return, return true if an odd number of inputs are true. OK, so here's an exclusive or as a single. But really, when you implement it, you would just cascade these just like an and or an or. Right now, 
we can write the truth table. And so this is the truth table for three inputs, right? Zero, zero. So you can see here, this is actually how I'm building. Notice these are 00011011, 00011011. Zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one. Zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one. And look at this, I, I can make a third input by having zeros and ones. So these are all the different combinations of three binary inputs. And notice there's eight. Remember that two to the n thing from diodes coming up? Two to the three is eight, good. And so if we can play the game of building out, well, what is X and what is the final output Y? So in this case, what is X? So if for X, we just look at A and B, right? X only cares about A and B. And so if we just look at A and B and we do the exclusive or 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. And then these both are high, so 0, 0, great. Now we can look at the exclusive or between X and C, all right? So what do we have? Zero, one, one, zero, one, zero, zero, one. Okay. Now notice this is the counterintuitive part that that I want you to be aware of. If I look at A, B, and C, look at this. One, good. Only one was true. One, one. The output is true. Only one is true. The output is true. And here, only one is true. The output is true. Notice here, two are true, zero. But here, all of them are true, and you get a one. So this confirms that the fact that multiple exclusive ors cascaded like this are going to give you true when the odd inputs are true. So just be careful when you're dealing with multiple exclusive ors. Okay, so let's do this last little quiz just to kind of wrap everything up. And like I said, let's, let's, let me just summarize here. If you have an and, what can it do? You can either set it low or unchanged. Okay, what about an or? And or you can either set it high or unchanged, right? And then what about an exclusive or? You can either invert or leave it unchanged. So that's the idea of what you want, want to have when we look at this little quiz. So let's say we have a, 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 a one loop and we're, we first set um, this variable as 10101000, okay? And let's say the first thing we do is we take this and we do an exclusive or with this random set of binary inputs, okay? What is the new uh, variable at state step two, okay? Then we're gonna take this answer and we're gonna plug in here and we're gonna do an or with this set and then what's that, that answer? And then we'll do it one more time, okay? And we'll do it with an and. So exclusive or, uh, this is an or and this is an and, all bitwise, okay? And the question is what are these values at these different steps, right? So what are these values after two, three, and four execute? Okay, so the first one is exclusive or, we notice that we can either invert or leave it unchanged. Now you can just blindly do this, but look, if you exclusive or everything with zeros, what do you get? You get nothing or you get, you get uh, basically whatever this was, right, unchanged. And that means all these ones here are gonna invert these bits. And so what you should see is, these are all flipped, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. And you can see that instead of 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, and these are unchanged 0 and 0. Okay, now if I take this guy here, feed it in and do an or with this one, what does an or do? I'm gonna raise everything high where these bits are. So that means the last four here are gonna be raised high no matter what, and these four are gonna be left unchanged. Okay, good, zero, one, zero, zero, and these are gonna be made high, good. Now, if I take this new answer and I feed an and into this, what's gonna happen? I'm going to kill everything that is zero and I'm going to leave everything that's a one here unchanged on this set. Okay, so that means this zero one zero zero is going to be uh, left uh, alone and these ones are now going to be made low. Okay, and you can see that here. Okay. I hope this lecture helped, this lecture series helped uh, with your understanding on logic gates and CMOS and how we can build CMOS and how you could actually implement this either in a analog circuit with chips or digitally with Arduino or some microcontroller. All right, have a great day. See you at the next one.